Christianity is the hope after now. As a matter of fact, while I was coming in the vehicle, that was what I was thinking about. What separates us from other religion? And I just realized that if you talk to one of them from the other side, there's very little confidence you will find about the afterlife. But God has given us a hope and that hope was birthed when Jesus went to the cross that he died that we will live not only will you enjoy that life here but even here after and that's why the writer of that song says I will exchange the cross so even though we go through sufferings and afflictions now the Bible declares that our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding weight of glory in other words, the glory that is to come is greater than what you are going through right now. And it is this hope that keeps us strong. In Hebrews, the Bible says this hope is an anchor for our soul. What a wonderful thing it is to be called a son and a daughter of God. And Lord, we give you praise and we thank you. Thank you for the privilege to be your sons and your daughters. Tonight we have gathered here before you, trusting you for an encounter that the river that flows from your throne will invade our lives, will bring us refreshing and transformation by your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to pray shortly before we are seated. In one minute I'd like you to lift your voice and at this five ten minutes of prayer i'd like you to pray desperately this is part of the service it is important that you pray it prepares your heart and it builds your faith to receive i'd like you to cry in two minutes and ask the lord for a visitation tonight lord i am here visit me by the power of your word lift your voice and pray the scripture declares in first samuel 4 verse 1 that the lord appeared unto samuel again by the word of the Lord in Shiloh. Lord, visit me. Give me an encounter. Appear to me tonight. I'm in your presence. Let something new happen in my life. We're in your presence. Just pray. Let it rain. Cause your rain to call on me. I'm in your presence. Let it rain. Cause your rain to fall on me. Open the floor.
salvation. Baba, we need your rain, Lord. Baba, say Baba, Cry to him for an encounter. Cry to him for a visitation. Lift your voice and pray. The Bible declares that they go from strength to strength. Each one that appears before God in Zion. Visit me, O God. Visit me with an encounter. In your presence. With an encounter by your spirit. Are you praying at all? Are you praying at all? Name will pray. Two more prayers and will be seated. Numbers chapter 21, verse 3. You are going to cry to God for an open heaven over your life. God is not only interested in feeding you with His word. He is not only interested in serving you with his presence when you appear before him. He is also interested in taking care of everything that looks like a need around your life. If you come before God and you go back with your needs still with you, it's a mockery and an insult to his power, to his pedigree as God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible calls him El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. He says, I'm the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard? I'd like you to cry to him for an open heavens tonight. And as the heavens will be opened over your life, everything that does not represent God will fall like a pack of cards. Numbers 21 verse 3. It says, And the Lord listened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. So the name of that place was called Homer. My emphasis in that verse, listen carefully, is the fact that the Bible declares that the Lord listened to the voice of Israel. Over two million people prayed, but the Bible says God listened to the voice of Israel. And the Spirit of God told me something while I was reading this verse this morning, that anytime my people cry together in unity and in oneness of spirit, I hear them as one voice. He said the God of Israel, that's covenant so when we gather like this and we begin to pray in oneness of heart we are invoking the covenant that God has with his people Israel we are causing God to hear us as one and remember that when Israel met God in the place called Peniel the Bible says his name was changed from Jacob to Israel he said for as a prince thou hast had power with God and with men and has prevailed are you ready to pray the Lord put this in my heart, so I'm going to give, I don't know why, probably there's somebody that God wants to attend to in the course of this prayer. I'd like you to cry and say, Father, let your heavens open over my life, over my family, over everything that surrounds me. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Make sure you are not distracted. 
This is a destiny defining moment. Make sure you cry to God till your voice is louder than your neighbors. Oh God, open your heavens over my life. The Bible says that they cry to God and the Lord listened to the voice of Israel. Lift your voice and cry to him. Father, open your heavens. Open your heavens. Over my life. Over my finances. Over my family. Over my health. Over my spiritual life. Open your heavens. Open your heavens. Open your heavens. When the heavens are open, his rain descends. When the heavens are open, the Lord visits his people. When the heavens are open, there are showers of blessings. When the heavens are open, the Spirit of God is poured out upon all flesh. Cry to him tonight. Open your heavens over our city. Open your heavens over our territory. Over my community. Over Nigeria. We cry for open heavens. The Bible says in Luke chapter 3 verse 22. That while Jesus prayed after the baptism. The heavens were open. And the spirit of the Lord descended as a door. Open your heavens over our land. Open your heavens over our nation. Over my family. Mighty name we pray. We are still praying for open heavens in this season. Isaiah 32 verse 15. Please, I'd like you to pray these prayers very well. We are in a season where God is visiting his people. Isaiah 32 verse 15. Isaiah 32 verse 15. Until the spirit is poured upon us from on high and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field and the fruitful field is counted as a forest. You are going to cry that the heavens be open over our land over nigeria over your family and let there be a rain of revival let there be a rain of divine visitation let there be a rain of blessing please lift your voice in the next two minutes and cry to him 
Let there be a rain of revival, a rain of grace and power. Let your heavens be open over us, a rain of glory. Make sure you're talking to him. Make sure you cry out to him this afternoon. A rain of your presence on our land, in our city, in Nigeria, in Africa. The rain of your presence. The rain of revival over my life, over my spiritual life. Let everything that is dead come back to life. Let everything that is dead come back alive. Let everything that is dead come back to life again. Until the Spirit be brought upon us from on high. Until the Spirit be brought upon us from on high. The reign of favor. The reign of grace. The reign of power. Somebody cry to him. Everything that is dead in your life must come back to life this season. Everything that is dead must come back by the power of resurrection. A rain of fire, a rain of grace. Cry out to him, inside and outside. Cry out to him, following from around the world. Let your rain come upon us afresh.
the Kepa Rusiata, Barato Koski Brete Kepa Suriata. Cry to him for a revival. Cry to him until the day spring from on high shall visit us again. Name we pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Psalms 25, verse 4. Psalms 25, verse 4. One more prayer before we are seated. Listen, all of these things that we do is part of the process. It's the engineering for a divine encounter. You pray till your faith is built up and your spirit is open for a visitation. A sudden encounter, a sudden surge of the power of the spirit of God that is capable of bringing transformation in and through your life. Psalms 25 verse 4. Quickly. It says, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. That's why you are here tonight. That through the ministry of his word, he will open your eyes to the mysteries that are hidden in his word. The Bible says that he showed his ways. He made his ways known to Moses. But his acts to the children of Israel. It is the discovery of the ways that produce the acts. That produce the result. It is when you have access to the ways of God. That you can become a sign and a wonder on earth. That is when you can live the supernatural life as God has destined you to be. I'd like you to cry in one minute again and say, Lord, tonight by the ministry of your word, show me your ways. Cry like Moses did. Show me your ways. Teach me your path. He say, I'm the Lord God that teaches you to profit and lead you in the way that you should go. Don't get tired of praying. Cry to him once more. mighty name we have prayed father by the ministry of your word and your spirit open our eyes to the mysteries that are in the kingdom the mysteries that are encapsulated in this life this glorious life that you have given to us let us become the things that we will hear tonight i ask for an activation of your grace lift your hands i ask for an activation of your grace and your power in this place i ask for an activation of the ministry of angels wrought signs and wonders in this place tonight let the sick be healed let the oppressed be delivered let your children experience enlightenment and empowerment and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Please be seated. Let's get straight to the business of tonight. Once again, it's my joy to welcome each and every one of us to Pneumatech. Somebody shout Pneumatech. Yes, indeed. An encounter with the wisdom, the presence, and the power of Jesus Christ. It's a technology that God is doing in this place. 
If you are here for the first time, I welcome you because you are being introduced into this spiritual technology. God is doing amazing things here. And this meeting is the secret to your walking and living as a son and a daughter of God. Experiencing the supernatural power of the spirit of God that dwells inside of you. Hallelujah. Tonight what I will share will really change the life of somebody here present. Some of you will launch into a new dimension in your walk with God tonight. If you are saying amen, you can say it better. Now, I want you to be sensitive while I'm teaching. The Lord told me that there will be heavy activity of angels in this place. Hear me. The Bible says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will be heirs of salvation? Angels are spirit beings created by the Lord that go about his business both on, in heaven and on earth. God sends them into meetings like this to anoint people. He sends them into meetings like this to bring deliverance, to bring healings. You may not see them with your naked eyes, but you can't deny their activity here. And it is important you understand that the power of your consciousness of spiritual things is what guarantees your experiences of the same. The power of your consciousness of spiritual things is what guarantees your experiences of the same. If you are aware but you are not conscious that God is doing something with you whilst you are seated, you will not experience the power that is being communicated whilst he's working on you. That's the reason why I just said or, or what, what I've just said now. I want you to be conscious there's going to be a heavy release. Many of you are going to experience new anointings come on you. Many of you are going to experience encounters by the Spirit. Some of you will travel from here into dimensions in the Spirit. Believe me. Believe me. Chains will break while I'm teaching tonight. For some of you, you came here so that God can once and for all break the chains of darkness around your life. Believe me, there is more than enough power for it. I'd like you to lay your hands on your eyes and say, Lord, open my eyes tonight. Pray that for one minute. Pray it consciously with determination. Pray it with determination and with sincerity of heart to receive. Open my eyes inside, outside, following online. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of wisdom, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh. Open our eyes, O oh God. Open our eyes that we may see and behold the deep things of the Spirit that we will see beyond the natural, that we will see beyond the physical. Transport us to a world that is beyond, a dimension in the heavens that is beyond the physical. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Holy Ghost power, rest on me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I'd like to share with you tonight on what I title Becoming by Beholding. 
becoming by beholding beholding becoming by beholding somebody's life will change today are you truly ready tonight God is in the business of transformation and from last week I told you we've been on a series of intimacy delving deeper into the mysteries that are revealed in the word of God it is by these mysteries that we come to understand and to know who God is this is a very vital aspect of your Christian experience it is more than just coming to church it is knowing the God that you claim to represent and you can claim to believe Paul said in 1st Corinthians 2 verse 6 he said how be it when we are among those who are matured we speak wisdom of course he was talking about spiritual maturity your spiritual ma spiritual maturity can be determined by how sensitive your perceptions are of the things of God how much experience you have had of God the Bible declares that God is spirit and so it is important that if you must know a God that is spirit you must know him within the frame of his reference within the sphere of his reality you cannot know a spiritual God in the flesh so you will need to be transported into the realm of the spirit you will need to have encounters you will need to be taught by the spirit you will need to be brought into truths that are beyond facts you will need your eyes to be open to see realities that cannot be seen by the common and the normal and the natural eye that is how you know God the knowledge of God produces a life a life force in a man such that you will not need that man will not need to speak for himself that he has met God no there is a radiance of the glory and the life of God from him there are certain results you find around his life that are not normal that are not natural and then you know that this is someone who has met with God beholding or becoming by beholding second Corinthians 3 verse 18 second Corinthians 3 verse 18 we read that during the I am the session of the I am confession he said but we but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord now let me give a little background so we can understand this particular verse Paul was speaking from the beginning of this chapter talking about the fact that we have been made ministers of the Spirit we have been translated into a new covenant and this covenant exists within this within the realm of the Spirit a spiritual dimension and therefore everything about us is transformed to take the shape that is programmed or is created for us under this new covenant so if we are ministers in the new covenant we become ministers of the spirit because it is the spirit of god that powers this new covenant that has brought us redemption and then paul began to you know differentiate between the ministry of the law and the ministry of grace which is the spirit that the law was given to us on tablets of stone and the end of it was death because it was the law in Paul the same Paul writing in Romans it was the knowledge of the law that brought sin the consciousness of sin to humanity but this new covenant which has brought grace and the impartation of the spirit has introduced us to the life of God that is above sin and so from verse 7 of 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 he began to talk about the experience that Moses had with God when he ascended the mountain in Exodus 33 and 34 the Bible says Moses was in the presence of God for 40 days and he did not know 
that the glory the atmosphere in that place literally began to change his physical form his face began to emit the same glory began to reflect the same glory the same brilliance the same light you see when we talk about glory the word glory simply means worth it means weight it means heaviness it means the worth or the weight of a thing the glory of a thing is what that thing is worth and then the greek word for glory speaks of brilliance speaks of light and so god reveals himself which is his glory to us from one dimension of light unto another don't worry you'll get to understand as we proceed so even though moses was not in the new covenant of which the the the, the 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 partakers of this new covenant were going to be the recipients of the spirit yet under the old covenant he was able to tap into the glory of god and then paul said if this old covenant that brought death had glory how much more would the one that brought righteousness not excel in glory i think that's in verse 10 or, or so but you see when moses came down from the mountain they had to cover his face with a veil because the people couldn't look at or behold the light that was coming from him you know god told moses when he cried unto god and said show me your glory god said no man can see my glory and live and it is true it is true first of all no man can behold with his natural eyes the glory of god and live you can't survive it it's not just the light of the sun no it is a light that ever increases in energy it is a light that has the capability of changing the form of anything that is within its environment when the bible says god is light you know in another place you say god dwells in light but then progressive revelation god is light and there is no trace of darkness in him and you know in the physical light is a source of energy but you are not just talking about a light that shines for people to see you are talking about a light that transforms and so they could not behold the face of moses and they had to cover his face with a veil unknown to them while his face was covered that glory began to fade because it was a glory that came under the old covenant which was the law they were not meant to experience that dimension of god under the law because under the law men had not been redeemed they had not been saved so sin was still a nature in humans and god said no flesh shall see my glory and live but in the new covenant the bible says not only do we have access to see and to behold that glory but that the same veil that was on moses face which also covered the heart of the people just the way they couldn't see when the glory left his face their heart also was figuratively covered by a veil that was why they couldn't understand the law that was why they were stubborn unto redemption and salvation that jesus brought but the bible says for us in the new testament that veil is taken away that veil of sin that veil of reproach that veil of the nature of the flesh the nature of self that does not allow us to behold and to see god for who he is has been taken off our minds and then in verse 18 of second corinthians 3 now you may understand what verse 18 is saying it says but we all with unveiled faces we are now exposed to the glory that comes from this new covenant that we are partakers of and then our minds have been renewed so that we can understand this life that we have been introduced to please keep the scripture for me he said but we all with unveiled face beholding us in a mirror the glory of the lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the lord now listen to this you see when you look at a mirror what you see is the very reflection of yourself and then it allows for you to make adjustments until what you see until your reflection in the mirror is the exact of the image that you have in your mind 
Is that true? There's an image you have in your mind of how your face should look. So when you look at a mirror, you make you keep making adjustments until what you what what is reflecting on the mirror is exactly what is in your mind. But it is not so with this verse. The Bible says, "Keep the verse for me, please." It says that we with unveiled faces we behold in a mirror the glory of the Lord. If it was naturally in the similitude of a mirror, there is no way that you can be changed to look like what is in the mirror. It is what is in the mirror that must change to look like what is in your mind. But the Bible says that the veil of sin has been taken off our mind and our heart so that the image of God for us which is in Christ has been revealed to us by the Spirit. And the Bible says when we behold him, when we encounter him, there is an image that is revealed to us and that encounter gives us the ability to be transformed to look like what we see. In other words, when God appears to a man or when God reveals himself to a man, the end of that experience is so that the man can take up the form that was revealed to him in that encounter. Do we understand that? It says, I've been transformed into the same image. So it's not just looking at a mirror and adjusting yourself. But it is looking into the face of Jesus and seeing your very image as you were created by God in Christ, in him. And then what you see carries the power to transform you. So the transformation is not you to yourself. You are not the one that will change yourself like you do when you look at a mirror. Do you understand that? It is what you see that has the power to transform you so that you look like what you see. A woman who is doing makeup has an image in her mind what she wants to look like. Alright? But who you were created to be, that image has been hidden in the revelation of Jesus Christ. And every time you encounter him, that image is what is projected. Figuratively, of course. It's not like Jesus will appear and say, you will be exactly like this. No. There is a char his character is revealed. His nature is revealed. His essence is revealed until it alters your, your atmosphere. It alters your mind and then conforms you to be exactly what you see. For instance, if God reveals himself to you as Jehovah Shalom, you have an encounter with God and you experience his peace. The reason for that encounter is to the end that you, you will take up the form of that character of peace. So that even when he's not appearing to you, even in the midst of a storm, you remain at peace. So you have been completely transformed to look like the encounter you had. Do you understand this? No, this, this today's new matter is for people who are ready to be matured spiritually. You now see why as good and as loving as it is for us to come to God because of material acquisitions that we intend to receive to make life comfortable for us on earth as good as those things are and god is more than enough to meet all our needs you can't call that the basics or you can't call that the fundamentals of christianity the reason why you have been saved is so that you can be conformed to an image that god had created for you even before you were made that image is revealed in the person of Jesus. So every time you see him, you are transformed to become as he is. In other words, you exchange your natural weakness for his supernatural strength. You exchange your insufficiency for his all-sufficiency. You are no longer bothered about your inabilities or incapacities as a man. Because that encounter has provided for you to be transformed into the very nature of God. And then you walk around carrying his nature. That's why we say in that I am confession. That I carry his nature. And I'm revealing his splendor. Because his splendor was first revealed to me in Christ Jesus. So that I can take up that form. And then you now become the instrument by which God will transform your environment and your world. To take up the character. 
Do you understand that? So it is to the end that you live a supernatural life. There is no man that meets with God genuinely and remains the same. Even if he's not conscious of it. There's something that changes. There's something that happens. Believe me when I tell you that every Sunday you come here, there is a change that has happened in you. Some of you, your consciousness have not caught up with the last five to seven Sundays of repeated transformations that your spirit and your mind has experienced. The reason why you are not walking in the reality of the transformation that has already occurred is because you have not been taught to be conscious that every time God reveals himself to you and I will show you the different pathways by which he reveals himself. That every time you encounter God and he reveals himself to you, it's not just because he wants you to see a vision. No, that vision that you saw is who you are supposed to be. It's the form you are supposed to take. So if you, if you have a dream, for instance, and in the dream, what you see is yourself flying in a private jet with so much wealth around you. It's not for you to wake up and begin to lust after it. No. God is simply revealing his nature of you. His opinion of you. That though you are poor and beggarly, but this is who I created you to be. He said, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. So that through his poverty, there can be a transformation that makes you rich. So God is simply telling you by that dream, this is who you are supposed to be. And what you don't know is that dream came with an end. <laughs> Let me satire. Listen, every channel of divine revelation, do you know that it carries spiritual energy with it? What you are seeing is a communication that transcended from another realm, another dimension. It came with power. It came with energy that can change and alter circumstances in this natural. What you saw was more than a dream. The energy to transform you to become what you saw was in that dream but you woke up without the consciousness of it and that's why many of us are living five years behind even god is surprised why some people are the way they are that's why i sang that song rest on me spirit of wisdom so that your eyes will be opened to see not who you will, you are going to be but who you are When Jacob met with, G with God that night, in fact, it wasn't even God he met. He was an angel. It amazes me that in Old Testament saints, the little encounters they had with God was able to produce so much for them. And then we New Testament saints that it, not God didn't send an angel to us. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 that God in sundry times and in diverse manners spoke through the, through the prophets to the fathers. A prophet may have seen a dream or a vision or maybe an angel appeared to them. That wasn't God directly. That was a third party kind of communication. But the Bible says in these last days has revealed himself to us through his son. We New Testament believers, we have the privilege of having direct access to the person of God in Jesus Christ. Jacob saw an angel and his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. And so powerful was that change that when he was about to die, he blessed his sons and cursed some. And for over 400 years, they remained with the curses until another man who saw God through an angel in a mountain came and reversed it. How much more you and I that have Jesus living inside of us. God is not even appearing to us again. He has come to dwell inside of us. He said, know you not that your bodies are the temple." Are we here tonight? Because something will shift in your understanding of God after this night. After this teaching. Becoming by beholding. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Popular scripture. It says looking to Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto him. Why? 
because your becoming is in your beholding remember where we came from second corinthians 3 18 as we keep looking at that image we are transformed to the same image from glory to glory from one dimension after the other so if we know that we are transformed by beholding if we know that we become by beholding then the bible says in hebrews 12 verse 2 that we must keep looking unto him keep looking unto him keep beholding him because it is in your beholding that you become Psalms 34 verse 5 this scripture one more and then we'll go into the body of the teaching and pray he said they look to him and what happened to them and their faces that means they were changed by what they looked at so it depends on who you look at if you look at your situations and circumstances <laughs> knowing fully well that you become by beholding you definitely become suicidal you become depressed if you look at the economy of nigeria or africa that's exactly your reality but the bible says they looked to him and they were radiant in the midst of pain and affliction and suffering in the midst of trials and tribulations they look to him in the midst of impossible situations around them they look to him and their faces were radiant of course because he is light and they were not ashamed the bible says no one that trusts in god shall be put to shame do you believe that i do i do he said none who trust in god see when you when you grow when you begin to grow in your knowledge of god one of the signs will be your solid faith and conviction in his word that when god says a thing and you see it in his word you can hold on to that thing with the whole of your life god said that no one who trusts in god will be put to shame you believe it and that becomes your ticket into a life of victory and a life of miracles he says some trust in chariots is that true and some in horses some in connections some in long leg some in money he said but we will trust in who that's enough so what are you going to do about this situation my brother i'm just trusting god though that is enough if it's god you are truly trusting that's enough they looked to him and they were radiant and they were not ashamed psalm 17 verse 15 final scripture this has become one of my favorite scriptures of, of scriptures in the bible he said as for me i will see your face in righteousness i shall be satisfied when i awake in your likeness look at this verse very well I will see your face in righteousness that means there is a posture that i must take for me to be able to behold your face he says and when i do that i will awaken in your likeness don't look at that word awaken as you wake up from sleep no i hope you know in scriptures especially if you have king james or new king james translations put the scripture for me especially if you have king james or new king james translations the word awake also means to revive it means to come alive and the bible says when i awake in thy likeness it means that as i behold you there is a transformation that happens in me so that i begin to take up the life form of what i'm looking at when i awake in your likeness i will be satisfied it happens when i behold your face so the more we keep looking unto jesus the more we keep beholding the image of god as in christ jesus the more we keep looking unto that which is revealed to us by god in the person of jesus the bible says we are awakened we come alive we take up the form of what we are looking at some of you will look into his face and contact his power some of you look into his face 
and contact courage and boldness fear will die forever in your life you know if you are if you are if you are very much afraid if you are someone who lives in fear you have not beheld him you've not had an experience of beholding him there is a dimension of god you will see that fear will die naturally fear for nothing i used to be afraid too before even as a preacher i used to be scared of the dark yes even as a preacher many will not tell you but i'm telling you the truth some of you entertain fear for many things fear of height fear of water fear of the uncertain or the unknown fear of the economy once you hear that fuel has there are some people that develop natural high bp once fuel scarcity looms you're just coming back from work that day and you suck you hey your bp is up all of all those kinds of fears is just a sign that there is a dimension of god you have not beheld you have not seen his face who can see the face of god and be afraid of anything again the face that if a man sees will die i'm talking about a natural man now of course not a man that is in christ a man in christ now has the ability to see the face of god you know try to where you are uh, we, there is scriptural interpretation has a basis okay it is true that moses said god told moses that no man can see my face and live it is true that was under the old covenant they were under the law and they were still under the bondage of sin but the bible says the law of the spirit of life which is in christ jesus has set us free from that law so we are no longer tied to the bondage of the law which is sin we are no longer ruled by the nature of the flesh so in christ jesus we are now new creatures and as new creatures there is a wiring in us that gives us the capacity to behold him and not die but rather to change you didn't get what i said are you here and you look at when you look into his face there are things that will just die when a man has seen the lord you you will not be scared of anything again i'm telling you you don't need boldness again your your battery of boldness will be full for life 100 percent There's a dimension of God you behold. You can never be afraid of demons. You can never, believe me, you can never be afraid of demons. You see in our miracle services and even in other services, you see different manifestations of deliverance here. Sometimes don't you pity me with the way you see how, how violent these demons are. Don't you pity me that when I go back to sleep, they will come for me. And you guess right, I really go back to sleep. Whether the demon has 10 horns or 20 horns, the Bible says he has put all things under my feet. Are you hearing me? It's not about appearance again. The devil knows. They have power. But he said, behold, I give unto you authority to tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I believed him when he says it. So you don't be afraid for me when you see demons. You see all kinds of violent manifestations. When we finish the service, I go back, thank the Lord for the service and sleep. I have never prayed and said, Father, any demon that is coming back to attack me. No, 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 no. Haba, haba, haba. I've seen him. I've seen the Lord. I've seen his face. And I know that he lives and dwells in me. If Jesus is dwelling in me, who can come and attack me? If God be for you, you see, your problem is you still believe that Jesus is residing in heaven. The Bible calls us his body and has given him to be head over the church, which is his body, through which he fills all things in all. How can I carry Jesus in all of his glory inside of me and go and sleep and be afraid of a demon? In fact, let me even share one experience with you. One time like that, finished praying on a Sunday morning 
and I decided to lay my head to rest. As soon as I laid my head to rest, a spirit came into the room. And I've seen that a lot of times, so I'm not even afraid again. And most times, you see, those pe people who have experienced um, attacks in their sleep where demon spirits come to them and they feel like somebody is pressing them. Sometimes it's not like they are pressing you. What's actually happening is that spirit came from another dimension. The energy level that drives that dimension is, is so powerful that it surpasses the energy level of this earth that you and I are living in. That's the reason why you feel like they are pressing you. They are not pressing you. It's their presence that applies restraint on anything that is physical. This is demon so This is the dimension they came from. How about your God who dwells in the cherubim? The one who shines forth from the cherubim. A light that can destroy, not even blind. A light that can destroy in pieces. And as soon as the spirit entered, I started struggling to shout Jesus. And then the Holy Spirit whispered to me, he said, you don't even need to shout. Command them from your thoughts. They will go. They can hear you. And as soon as I said Jesus, phew, that was it. Command them from your thoughts. Did your script, your Bible not say that he's able to do exceeding abundantly far above all you ask or think? We must, brothers and sisters, we must content to behold his face. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. There is a dimension of God you see that you are always assured of tomorrow. There is hope for tomorrow. Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 19, he said, because I live, ye shall live also. You are never afraid. Whether the dollar jumps to one five or it comes down to one naira. And I don't know when that will happen. Whether the bag of rice is 85,000, how much is it now? I don't know. How much? You have the figures now. Whether it's 200, 300, when I want to buy a bag of rice, I will buy in peace. Without any stress or without contribution. You know, some people need to do contribution with their salary. We'll gather this month. The next month we'll gather. Then you now gather in your own mood gather it together that's what we'll buy one bag of rice god is shifting you after this night there's a dimension of god you behold anywhere he sends you you will go jesus asked his disciples he said when i sent you lacked ye anything they said nothing he said when i sent you without purse or bag or script i'd even allow you to carry wallet talk more of taking money he said lacked ye anything they said nothing i'm telling you there is a dimension of god you behold you can start that business by faith even with very little capital and you know that it will grow to become a multi-millionaire business there is a dimension of God you behold as a man of God that you will walk naturally and effortlessly in signs and wonders. I'm telling you, it's not about you. These signs shall follow them that believe. It's not about you. That's why it's easy. We must contend to behold him. We must desire a face-to-face -face encounter that guarantees, guarantees our transformation. Write these three facts. Number one, in the believer's journey of transformation, in the believer's journey of transformation, Christ is both the model and the pattern. In the believer's journey of transformation, Christ is both the model and the pattern. He is both the model and the pattern. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. He began and he ended. So he has become the model of our faith and the pattern. These are two words that you must understand. The model means the sum total of all we will become in God is in Christ Jesus. The revelation of Jesus Christ is who the church is destined to be. 
can I do something to your mind a little bit? Revelations chapter 1 verse 1. Put the scripture. See, when you come to New Matek, you will know God. No, believe me, when you come here, lazy Christianity dies in this place. Let me shake you a little bit. Look at this verse. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. Now, many of us, when we read this scripture, you feel that the Bible is really saying the revelation of Jesus. Just keep the scripture there till I'm done. That the revelation of Jesus Christ is God revealing Christ to the church. That's how many of us understand it, isn't it? The revelation of Jesus Christ to the church. But you see, when the Bible says the revelation of Jesus Christ, it's saying that God encountered John and the product of that encounter was a revelation that came from God. And that revelation is actually the image and the nature of the church. Because the revelation of Jesus is the church. Because Jesus is the head of the church that is his body. That's why in this same chapter, when you read down to verse 12, 13, 14, the appearance of Jesus was the church. Go to verse 12. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, what did I see? Which was representative of the seven churches in Asia. So the revelation of Jesus was actually the nature of the church. The image of the church. Communicated by John. Because God revealed himself in Jesus. So Jesus said, he who has seen me has seen the Father. You don't need to look for God again. Don't confuse yourself and say there is God and there is Jesus. No. Jesus is God in flesh. He is the manifestation of God. That means that the revelation of Jesus is the church. Some of you get it in two months time. Believe me. The revelation of Jesus is the church. That's why he saw seven lampstands, which was representing the church. And he saw one like the Son of Man walking in the midst. So Jesus was simply saying, I have limited my expression and my manifestation to the shape and the form that the church will give me. That's why he was walking in the midst of the lampstands because the lampstands represents the church. Jesus says, aside from the church, the church is the only institution that is permitted to give express revelation of my person as Jesus. And outside of the church, I will not take any other form. So the revelation, go back to verse 1 of Je Revelations 1. So the revelation of Jesus Christ is simply the expression of the church. God was simply showing John, this is the state of the church and this is who they should be. Because the revelation of Jesus is the church. And the revelation of God is Jesus. Because you and I have been made his body. Do you understand when the Bible says we are the body of Christ? For as a spirit without a, a body without a spirit is dead. A spirit to do anything to inhabit a body. And Jesus decided that the full expression, remember, in Ephesians 1 verse 3, the Bible says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Not in, in, not in Christ in heavenly places. No. In heavenly places in Christ. That means the revelation of Jesus Christ stretches beyond the heavens and the earth completely. If it says heavenly places are in Christ.
So those heavenly places are simply dimensions in the spirit of the expression of the person of Jesus Christ. You touch one, you'll experience his power. You touch another one, you experience his love and compassion. And then you who could reply anybody with an instant slap, you become as calm as a dove. Have you seen those kind of people? Uh -huh. That one is not discipline. It's an encounter that brings that. That is why Paul, who was killing Christians when he met Jesus, was ready to die. What do you think happened? Do you know what it means to train a jihadist? To train a terrorist? It's their life. They are, they, are, they are willing to die for that cause. The Bible says he chased Christians to Damascus to bring them dead or alive. And then all of a sudden, one encounter on the road and this guy will stand before people that he went to arrest and preach boldly even to the risk of his life. What do you think happened to him on the road to Damascus that altered the years of training he had? It was a transformation that cannot be captured in natural natural preliminaries now you see that's the kind of transformation that must happen to a believer if you must truly represent god on earth the reason why we have a lot of people betraying the kingdom a lot of people giving away is because they've not truly met him they've not experienced the revelation of jesus there's something about god you know that changes even your thought pattern it conforms your thought think of something that controls and programs your thought it totally controls your life so the revelation of jesus is the church that's why you see all that john saw from chapter one to chapter three was the church so when he said the revelation of Jesus which God gave to John to don't think that Jesus appeared to him and said hey, go and show me to the church. No, 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 no. When God wants us to rise in transformation from one dimension to another, when he wants us to, to grow in our becoming, he reveals Jesus to us because Jesus is the model and the pattern. The model means the sum total of everything. It's like looking at your future. If you are in 100 level, I remember <laughs> years ago, somebody was in 400 level and they had, you know, what they call um, fellowship, what they call um, departmental fellowship. So the 400 level guy went for the fellowship and then he met 100 level girls. They just came in, they just resumed. You know, so they say, introduce yourself to one another. another. So he, he went and shook one of the girls and said, hi, my name is so, so and so, your future. And the lady got offended. And he said, oh, it's the truth. What level are you? She said, 100 level. You just resumed. What level am I? 400. This is, how, this is where exactly where you'll be. <laughs> so when the Bible says Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, see, everything you become in God is encapsulated in him. So all God will need to do is reveal him to you. So you move from one level to the high the next level of transformation that's all this is the reason for spiritual encounters it's not so that you wake up and begin to pride around that jesus appeared to me what did you do with what he did do? that's the reason why sometimes some dreams you have you wake up more confused how many of you has it happened to that you know maybe an angel or a spirit appeared to you Maybe using the form of a man of God, somebody, and they didn't even say anything to you in the dream. You just saw them and they left. They said over a thousand words. In the realm of the spirit, communication is not only by words. So one encounter can last you for a lifetime. Anytime God wants you to move up higher in your school and journey of transformation, he can replay that encounter again, that dream. And then five years ago, when you had the dream, you didn't hear anything. But five years later, when the dream comes to you, you are now hearing what was inaudible there. There's a man of God in this country. 
who will always talk about a particular vision God showed him that you know brought him into prosperity and wealth and all of that wonderful when he shares the vision you will not even understand so there was a season in my life I was praying and contending for financial prosperity I know this is a possibility in Christ but I needed to capture its reality in the spirit realm because when you do money will become your servant you know what God did after praying one day I slept off in prayer and God brought that vision to me that the man is sharing you know, he brought it to me then the spirit spoke one word and that was how I entered that dimension I'm sorry I won't tell you what it is content for your own amen it's not everything that Paul saw that he shared uh, even John there was a time he wanted to write God said don't write this one keep it that's what makes us when we are mysterious uh -huh, you must not understand every part of you so that's what truly makes us sons of God there's a dimension of me that is mysterious so you just forget even if you point me a gun you better just shoot me because I won't share it with you you say apostle okay I will point a gun to your loved one I'm there that gun will not shoot because if you are fighting to know what happened in my life that you don't know and I know it makes me above you because what you don't know is above you and that's the reason why your gun will not shoot I just said something for somebody when you hear me say I will never be in a car that will have accident I will disappear it's by a revelation and now it's you see it is it's reflecting on everybody here near accident nothing happened what 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 how can you explain you are standing and a man is standing in front of you and the car comes and clears him is the speed not enough to at least hit you by the side and you are standing there no that one was more than luck she may not have captured the revelation but the energy has been transmitted so the believer's journey of spiritual transformation Christ is both the model and the pattern the pattern now speaks of the step-by-step -step procedure into becoming that model yes that's why there are times there are seasons in your life where God will say fast and skip breakfast there are other seasons where God will say pray every night then there are other seasons you want to fast God will say eat the pattern step by step according to the degree of transformation Christ is both the model and the pattern number two our progress in the faith our progress in the faith is determined in respect to our conformity to the image of Christ our progress in the faith is determined in respect to our conformity our progress in the faith is determined in respect to our conformity to the image of Christ. That means that the progress of our faith, how we know that we are growing from faith to faith, is in how conformed we are to the image of Christ. Knowing that Christ is our model and our pattern, can you check your life, examine your life and discover that you have grown in conformity in a level to the image of Christ in other words the progress of our faith is in becoming like Christ that's just it David said I will awaken in your likeness so the more of God that you look like that you reflect tells the progress of your faith not how long you have been in church not how often you come to church not even even if you sweep the church and mop the wall of the church no this business of transformation to know that you are growing from faith to faith is not about those things it's about how conformed can people look at you and begin to see christ in you that okay in the area of love truly this aspect we are seeing when we look at you is like we are looking at jesus because we see it in how you freely give to people how you lavishly look after people your heart your care towards people 
your burdened compassion for people people will look at you and you will not need to tell them that there is an alteration going on something in you is beginning to change in conformity to the image of christ romans 8 30, 29 what does he tell us he said those whom he predestined those for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son this is why we were saved and brought into jesus christ that we will be conformed to his image everything god wants to look like jesus that's it i don't have time i would have shown you a place in ephesians chapter one where the bible says in the fullness of time and in the fullness of dispensation of time he will gather everything to become one in christ so that when god looks at every believer all he's seeing is his son jesus so we must keep conforming keep changing looking like him day after day philippians 3 verse 9 to 11 it says i'm being found in him not having my righteousness my own righteousness which is from the law but that which is true faith in christ so even in faith the faith that makes you righteous must be the faith that is founded in christ he says the righteousness which is from god by faith then in verse 10 he says that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed you see conformity there he keeps bending us until we begin to reflect that image not something else that's why if we look at any manifestation in your life and it cannot be traced either to scripture or through the likeness of christ we have to suspect that you are making contact with another spirit yes we have to suspect if there's any part of you that is not conforming to him there are some christians that in two sentences they will say god bless you or they will say jesus three times in two sentences so any small thing oh bless you oh god be praised oh jesus but they are the greatest thieves in their office yes so expert in that trade of stealing that even the unbeliever will look at them and say hi jesus the only believer will shout jesus <laughs> have you seen people like that they'll call it smartness he just professes jesus with his lips but his life does not reflect the image he is not reflecting the likeness remember that even in Genesis, God's intention was for creating man was that man will be created in his image and will live like him. That's why we are called Christians. It means little Christs. Christ everywhere. In fact, somebody says the word Christian, this is what it means. Christ and I-A-N. I-A-N means is all now. So it's Christ is all now. So our progress in the faith is determined in respect to our conformity to the image of Christ. And then number three, what you look at determines what you will look like. What you look at determines what you will look like. Let me give you some scriptural examples to explain this principle. What you look at determines what you will look like. In Exodus 34 verse 28 to 30, the Bible talks about Moses was in the mountain 40 days, no food, no water. And the glory of God that came on that mountain began to reflect on his face. And so when he came down, he began to shine like the glory that he encountered. There was a dimension he looked at and he began to look like. In fact, in Numbers chapter 12, the Bible says Moses had become the meekest man on the face of the earth. He had stayed with God so much that it had affected his character. Humility and meekness had come in. And God, when he was speaking to Aaron and Miriam in verse 6 to 8, he said, if you have a prophet among you, I reveal myself to them in dreams and vision. But my servant Moses is not like that. More than a prophet, he said, I speak to him face to face. 
Yes, somebody is asking a question. Apostle, does it mean God saw yeah, Moses saw God face to face like this? Now you need to understand when the Bible uses figurative terms to try to express or to um, demystify certain things. When the Bible speaks of face to face, it's figurative to mean a, a close level of intimacy. If I'm talking with you like this, it means we are close physically and it also means that we share a bond. Are you hearing me? So it was, he used face to face to describe the level of intimacy between Moses and God. Not like Moses saw God face to face. Remember, God told him in chapter 33 that no man will see my face and leave. And in John chapter 1 verse 18, John said, no man had ever before seen God. You say, but the only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father has revealed him. Another translation. Do we understand that? But then Moses was hanging around the presence of God and he began to look like it. In fact, it so affected his natural state that in Deuteronomy chapter 34, the Bible says that Moses died 120 years. Yet his eyesight was perfect. The strength of his youth was still there. And in verse 10, the Bible says there was no man that God ever spoke to or revealed himself like Moses. What you look at is what you will look like. In Matthew 17 verse 1 to 8, Jesus, while in prayer as a man, beheld the glory of God in the place of prayer and his, his form was instantly changed. The Bible says he began to shine with so much light. And you know the end of the story. Why? Because he beheld God in prayer. That means that every time we behold Jesus in prayer, something is already happening. You may not see it physically in you, but it's a change that is from within. Another example is the apostles. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 to 18, Peter himself gave a testimony of what happened on the Mount of Transfiguration. He said, For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He said, For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased he said and we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain we heard the voice we saw his form we beheld him and then much later after the death of jesus in acts chapter 4 verse 13 the bible says that while peter and john stood before the sanhedrin they looked at them they knew these were uneducated fishermen but they realized that they had been with Jesus. Why? They literally began to take up the form of Jesus. As bold as Jesus was to the Pharisees, that's how bold they became. How can uneducated fishermen speak with such eloquence that we have nothing to say about what they are saying? It's the same way Jesus, who never went to the school of the Pharisees, was able to ask them questions they couldn't answer and was able to answer their questions. Why? Because they were with him. What you look at is what you will look like. In Acts chapter 6 verse 15, the Bible speaks of Stephen, a very wonderful example here. The Bible says, when they summoned him before the high priest and the assembly, they looked at his face and his face was shining like an angel. Stephen was walking with God in so much intimacy that the presence of God was so strong around him. It's as if Stephen could take his leg like this one step away and he had entered heaven. Because the Bible says they looked at his face and he was like an angel. He was so in tune and in touch with heaven that heaven became the environment around him. And then in chapter 7, in verse 55 to 56, the Bible says while they were talking about stoning him, he looked into heaven and he saw the heavens open and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Now, before he died, the last thing he said was he interceded for the people who were stoning him. 
He said, God, please do not charge them with this sin. You know why he was able to do that? Remember this principle. What you look at determines what you will look like. In verse 55, the Bible says that he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And in Romans chapter 8, in verse 34, the Bible says Jesus died and rose again and is at the right hand of God making intercession. What you look at determines what you... That's why he could look at pe wicked people stoning him and say, Lord, he interceded for them. Because that was what he saw. If all of God that you know is judgment by fire, nobody will live around you. And I'm not saying judgment by fire is not good. It's good. It's a dimension of God. But you can't be judging by fire every day. If you judge everybody by fire, who will repent? The reason why it's difficult for many believers to love again especially those ones who have been hurt abused and pained in the past is because there is a dimension of jesus that they need to look at listen let me tell you i've said this before and i'll say it again anytime you come out of a heartbreak or you come out of an abuse situation or you come out of a season where people hurt you the best thing to do is to hide in the presence of god you know what God will do? He will reveal his love to you. It is that love that will heal you and extend forgiveness to those people whether they ask you or not. If that does not happen, you have not been delivered from that situation. Demons will exploit you because of that. If you think that sin gives access to demons, huh? try unforgiveness it's a faster access I'm telling you I don't have time to show you Matthew chapter 18 you remember the parable of the servant who owed his king so much money and the king forgave him and then he went to meet another servant who was owing him small money and he catched the guy by the neck say pay me man pay me my money threw the guy in prison and would not listen to any plea and then the king called him and said, wicked servant, I forgave you big debt. But you, you can't forgive another person. He said, throw him to the tormentors. Why? Because he didn't forgive. And Jesus said, so shall my heavenly father do to any one of you if you do not forgive. The tormentors there was a figurative expression for demons. So every time you come out of a situation of pain and affliction, you need to hide in the presence of God. You need to behold his love. Believe me. Believe me. Every time you are about to set up a business or start up an assignment that God has given to you, God knows you will always be afraid. So he will reveal Jesus to you as your peace. He will reveal Jesus to you that in such a way that you will experience boldness and courage. To be able to step out to do what God has called you to do. Every time people laugh at you or mock at you, He will reveal Jesus to you as your joy and peace. He said, Count it all joy, brethren, when you go through diverse trials. Listen to this that I wrote here a continuous evolving in our speech character mindset and lifestyle to greater reflections and clearer expressions of the image of christ till he returns or we see him this is what transformation really is a continuous evolving in our speech character mindset and lifestyle to greater reflections and clearer expressions of the image of Christ till he returns and we see him that for me is what transformation is all about first John 3 verse 1 to 3 it says what manner of love the father have given unto us that we may be called the sons of God in verse 2 he says behold beloved therefore now are we the sons of God he said though it does not yet appear it has not been revealed what we shall be but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him 
as he is a continuous evolving we keep changing in our speech in our character in our mindset you even begin to think like jesus so you will no longer be judgmental just the way jesus was not judgmental on the woman that was caught in adultery in our lifestyle to greater reflections and clearer expressions of the image of christ i don't need to read it again when you listen to the message you'll get you get it as we close pathways of beholding the lord pathways of beholding the lord i want you to write it and then we are going to pray pathways of beholding the lord have you written it put your hand on what you have written and pray in the spirit for one minute i'm about to show you keys that can position you for spiritual encounters pathways by which you can experience a direct revelation of jesus Oh, that God will open our eyes tonight. Oh, that God will open your eyes again. Hallelujah. Number one, pathways of beholding the Lord. Number one, prayer. Mm. Mm -hmm. Prayer. If you catch what I will tell you tonight, there will never be a time you pray and you didn't experience a revelation of Jesus. In Luke chapter 3, the Bible says in verse 22, when Jesus came out of River Jordan after the baptism, that the heavens were open but notice the bible says the heavens opened while he was praying in verse 21 while he prayed the heavens opened and he beheld the glory of god coming down in form of a dove that means every time we pray there is an opening in the heavens an opportunity for you to behold the lord an opportunity for you to be brought in close contact with the revelation of God. This is not a religious exercise. This is practical in your walk with God. The last time you prayed, what happened in your prayer, your prayer time? What happened in your prayer experience? Many of us have become so religious with prayer that we no longer even follow or obey the protocols of prayer again. Do you know something happened today? I finished praying and I stood up this afternoon from my knees. I, I, as soon as I stood up, I was going to do something. You know now, we are always thinking about many things. So you are waiting to leave prayers so that you can go and attend to it. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you have not forgotten to thank me before leaving. And like a religious man, like we all do, you know how I did it now. I just rushed the thanksgiving. Oh, Father, we thank you. And I was just doing my thing. The Bible says, while he prayed, the heavens. Listen, prayer is a spiritual exercise. This is interaction with God. So, as, as soon as you begin to pray, you need to be conscious that there is an opening. The atmosphere around you changes. And then it orchestrates for you an encounter that can give you a direct face-to-face -face experience with the Lord. If Jesus saw God in his bodily form as a dove while he prayed, and to tell you that that was not just a coincidence, while he was praying, he's still in the book of Luke in chapter 9, while he was praying on the mountain, remember in verse 27, he told them, he said, there are some of you who will not see death until you see the kingdom of God. And then in verse 28, the Bible says he took three disciples to the mountain to pray. And then in verse 29, the Bible says, while he was praying, if they had sat there on the mountain for seven days, nothing would have happened. Just because you are in the place of prayer does not mean anything will happen. But as soon as you begin to engage that activity, something, if you are sensitive, something begins to pop up, open 
your senses begin to pop open there is a you begin to sense an atmosphere that is strange around you brother when that happens you are already experiencing a face-to-face -face encounter jacob said the lord was in this place and i did not know may that not be your story all the while you have been praying you don't know that god has always been there because you are overladen with your problems or because you are so religious you feel you understand everything about prayer in this kingdom the bible says in first corinthians 8 verse 2 let him that thinks he know know that he knoweth not as he ought to know the day you begin to think you know so much in this in this kingdom that's when you go down no? some of us feel that if i pray for one hour that's when i'll be charged and that's when i can have fellowship with god what of if as soon as you said in jesus name he appears there did he not say where two or three are gathered in my name where will i be dear in fact he didn't say dear i will be he said dear i am you know i am is his name some people feel until i charge myself for two hours ah god can break that your protocol in fact there are some of you you are living in that realm now that's why you are confused before you were used to praying for three hours before you begin to feel something and now you begin to pray you are not you are waiting for the feeling and you are not feeling anything but you are sensing in your spirit that there's something not natural about this atmosphere but it's just that you feel that you must pray for three hours first that's why you don't think that it will come so cheap brother god can interrupt your protocol anytime when jesus came to me i was not fasting and praying praying in fact i just finished the surgery they just operated me that day they brought light went inside to sleep and as i put my head on the bed that was it when i woke up i thought it was five minutes it was four hours that had gone by from that day till sunday i was crying not like i was the tears were just coming out we had prayer the next day now you, you remember i went and sat somewhere i said is it like this and you know what he told me in that encounter he said teach my people that rest is when they forsake all and focus on me most times it's because we don't focus on him that's why we don't see him revealed in prayer that's why somebody will after praying somebody is even more afraid than they even when they started praying have you seen people who gather to you and say hey, pray for us oh pray for us oh may they give us this admission oh and you're asking yourself whether that person is going to pray by faith or the person is praying by fear he said but this is the confidence we have in him that whatever we ask him according to his will he hears us and if we know that he hears us we know that we have whatever we ask is that simple in the place of prayer you'll be holding some of you if you are sensitive the moment you close your eyes and begin to pray in the spirit you begin to see pictures in your imaginations you think it's your imagination it's visions you are having what happened is that you have just translated from the earth realm to another dimension in the heaven and what you are seeing are the realities there some of you god has been showing you what you are praying for god to show you has been showing you for a long time now but it's just that you are not sensitive you are trying to box god to a formula no no we behold him in prayer we behold him in worship the goal of worship is that the worshiper will become like the worshipped that's the goal of worship worship will exalt only jesus before you and cast down every other thing around you so that all that you see is him until you become what you see so in the place of worship so when we gather like this in moments of worship there are people who believe the only spiritual part of his service is when they are praying or when the man of god is preaching you are one-sided in your belief in fact the easiest way to see god is in worship exalted high above the worship of the people of the earth 
I see the Lord. I see the Lord. This was Azar's encounter. Now my eyes have seen the King. The Lamb upon the throne who reigns forever. Once you begin to worship Him and you focus on those songs, those songs will begin to create the very image of what you are singing until Jesus is exalted higher than that rent you have not paid. Higher than that admission that you've not gotten. First list is out. Your name is not there. And then Jesus will tell you after that session that I am Alpha Omega. Nobody calls an end to anything until I bring an end to it. Even if three lists are out and they say that's the last. If the Omega has not concluded for you, there can be what they call supplementary list. I'm telling you. You behold him in the place of worship you get lost in him and sometimes 10 15 minutes of that and the glory of god is in your room and you know why i like worship it's something you can do anytime any day you can take that atmosphere in your car to walk you can take that atmosphere in your office when somebody steps into your office, there's another, it's like another world, another atmosphere. One of the reasons why I put air condition in my house is so that when it's very hot, when you step into my house, you it's like you entered another atmosphere. I'm conscious about atmosphere. I don't know about your Holy Ghost, but I believe my Holy Ghost does not like it. I believe it because me, I don't like it. I'm, a, I'm his temple. Are you hearing me? How do people pray in heat? Ah! No, that's why God will bless you so that uh, say amen to that now. No, me, my own Holy Ghost doesn't like it because me and his temple I don't like. You create that same atmosphere. Somebody runs into your house with bad news, but you are so you are overwhelmed with that atmosphere, and you just tell them it will be well. Some of you, when your man of God replies your your prayer point with it is well you are not happy the question you've not asked is what is exactly happening to this guy when he made, when he sent that reply if that man is beholding the face of god forget about anything you think is a burden then imagine if you see him every day ah. open the eyes of my heart lord Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you highly. To see you highly lift that up. And you're shining in the light of your glory. This is how you get lost in his presence. Your power and love and all will see is holy, holy, holy. To see you highly lifted up and you're shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we see holy, holy, holy. One more time. As we sing, holy, 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 we want to see you. We want to see you. That's the whole essence even for retreats. That's why you have retreats. As you pray and you worship before him, he reveals himself. All that, you see, let me ask you a question. How many of you have gone into the presence of God either through prayers or worship? You came with an intention to talk to God about something and then God is talking to you about another thing as though he doesn't know what is in your mind. Now let me help you understand. 
God was simply speaking to you by that action. He's telling you is either that thing that you are presenting to him has already been handled. He has answered it. You are just not aware. Yes, you are just not aware. Okay, look at it now. The lady just finished sharing a testimony and God instantly speaks and says, Visa, which they've not called her for, has been released. So the way God speaks sometimes, eh? God will look at a lion's den and say, Go there and transform them to become men. Lion too. God is saying to you, it's either that thing you are crying about, I've already met it. I've met that need. Or that that need, I'm so big that that need is too inconsequential before me. Forget about it and let's discuss other matters. So when that happens to you, just keep your need aside and focus on what God brought. That's the science in hearing God. But some of you know, you will throw it aside and say, eh, eh, Father, I know you are righteous. But see, I never pay my school fees. I never... <laughs> You've not beheld him enough. You've not beheld him enough. One of the easiest things for me to do is if God tells me empty my account, it's so easy. It's so easy. Like I did it before coming here. Without even thinking. You know why? I've grown, I've seen God too much that I know he's with me. He will never leave me or forsake me. And I know that my source is beyond those figures on my phone. God can use anything, anyone from anywhere to bless me. That's what I believe. Including you that don't believe it. You will bless me first, then you will start thinking about it. I know it all. I know it. This is not a corporate belief. This is my belief. I know it. God speaks to me tomorrow and says, go to Niger. And set up another branch of SGNI gladly and happily in fact i'm leaving this month before april because the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof so apostle how will you how will you cope they don't speak english don't worry the power of god is not in english so pathways of beholding the lord number one in prayer number two in worship number three in the study of the word in the study of the word under that section of worship write these scriptures Job 35 verse 10 and Revelations 4 verse 8 to 11 Job speaks of God giving songs in the night seasons in your down seasons when you begin to worship God he gives you songs of revelation of himself number three in the study of the word Psalms 119 verse 18 says open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from your law. Every time you study the word of God, it is him revealing himself afresh. You are looking at his face. It is more than just a Bible studies period. And then number four, exercising love towards one another. When we show love to one another, we behold his face again. Yes. That person you are showing love to will see Jesus in you. And then finally, before we pray, I wrote here four windows or four seasons of divine encounters for a believer. This is like an additional part of the message. Four windows or seasons of divine encounters for a believer. Now we know that it is job, the job of the Holy Spirit in the place of prayer, in worship, in the study of the word, in exercising love one to another. It is the job of the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to us. I want to give you four seasons in the life of every believer that can guarantee for a divine encounter. If you are passing through any of these seasons, get ready to see God. Number one, in fellowship in fellowship both in fellowship with God that's in your quiet time or in fellowship with other believers when you gather or congregate with other believers in the presence of God God reveals himself to his people 
So every time you are experiencing a moment of fellowship, either in your personal time or in the company of believers, you are within a spiritual window for the, divine, the experience of divine encounters. Number two, in sufferings and afflictions. Yes. Every time you are going through seasons of sufferings and afflictions, that is the most ripe moment for a divine encounter. That is when God will appear to you the most. Believe me. John was in the Isle of Patmos. He was banished to live and suffer and die there. Where did he see Jesus? There. Not in Jerusalem. All the while he was in Jerusalem, he didn't see Jesus. Here's what Job said in Job 19, 25 to 26. He said, For I know that my redeemer liveth, and he shall stand at last on the earth. He said, Even though this skin is destroyed, yet in my flesh I know I will see God. In moments of afflictions, you have been positioned for the experience of a divine encounter. God will not only come to you when things are good. He also comes when things are bad. In sorrows, he's my comfort. Now hear me. He's the comforter, isn't it? And Jesus said, I will leave the comforter to abide with you forever. Many people feel that in seasons of afflictions, there are no lessons to learn. There is nothing about God. In fact, some people become prayerless and they make it an excuse simply because they are passing through stuff. No. What was more destructive than what Job went through? Everything had fallen. Nothing was remaining. Even his skin was literally dying. Job said, in this flesh, I will see God. In the midst of affliction and trials. In the midst of your pain. That's when God will give you a song that can change your generation. You just lost your wife or you just lost your mother. That is the period where God will reveal himself to you again. An encounter that will forever mark in your life the evidence of his joy and peace. The day my mother died was the day God spoke to me almost, almost the most. Before she died, he told me she would die. When she passed away, he said, do this, do this, do this, do this. That was the season. It was like the heavens opened. I was experiencing open visions that's because god is not mortal he's not moved by the things that moves us and it is interesting and good that your god is not moved by what moves you because if god was moved by what moves you then you are hopeless who will comfort you when you are moved you didn't understand what i said if god was moved by the things that moved you who will comfort you when you are moved That's why I say, nay, in all these things, not outside, we are more than conquerors. And then somebody says, bow face. This one will never cry because his mother died. In fact, somebody came and told us, he said, I'll just give Jonathan, give him one month, two months. He will cry. He passed, I didn't cry. We buried, he said, okay, after the burial of his mother, I gave him one month, till today. Do I miss her? Yes. But the reason why I can't cry is because in that season, I encountered the joy of the Lord and I found that strength does not come from outside it comes from within ah, there's a song I would have sung by Detrick Haddon the joy of the Lord is my strength I would have sung, I would sing that song next week I'm telling you until today so I know what to say to somebody who loses a loved one I was speaking with a woman I don't know if she may be watching this now. She tried IVF and it didn't work. And you know how much they spend for IVF. The pain, the emotion. And she came to see me while I was in Abuja. And I spoke to her. I shared with her my experience when my mother passed away. How God comforted me. The reality of his joy. In fact, that was when I was studying the Bible more. You know what? When she left my place, the grief lifted from her. The next day she was talking with her friend she said she doesn't know what's happening to her she expected that she would be crying by now he said the joy of the lord so in seasons of afflictions in your pain and your tears know that god has positioned you for an encounter 
I'm speaking this because there is somebody here who has gone through some stuff. You probably have not healed from it. I'm here to tell you that in the midst of that, God is still speaking to you. And it is those words that come from him that will chart the course for the next phase of destiny. He's simply telling you that the loss of that loved one or the loss of that thing or the hurt or pain that came does not mean the world has come to an end for you. Jesus said, because I live, you shall live also. Number three, in seasons of divine encounter, yeah, there are moments in the life of a man where God reveals himself. Seasons of divine encounter. Revelations 1 verse 9 to 10. John had his own moment on the Isle of Patmos. The thing about encounter is that God will not tell you when he wants to encounter you. Are you hearing me? And let me help you. It's good to fast and pray and seek the face of God. But encounters are allocated by divine timings. He can encounter you anywhere. He can even encounter you tonight on your way home. Whilst you are seated in the tricycle. And that's when he reveals himself. And then finally, number four, at his return. When he returns again, 1 John 3 verse 2 says, We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And that is the hope that we have that someday Jesus would descend beyond the skies and we will see our Lord face to face. The same Lord that you experience in your time of prayer and intimacy with Him. The same Lord that you are afraid of. You don't know whether He's with you when you are going through battles. You will see Him one day face to face. Ours is not like other religions that the founders of the religion don't even know where they are going to. No. God has given us hope. And that hope is someday we will see him. And the good news is that when you see him, you will discover that you were exactly like him. That's what that scripture says. For we shall be like him as he is. So to recap before we pray, four windows or seasons of divine encounter for a believer. Number one, in fellowship. Number two, in sufferings and afflictions. Number three, in seasons of divine encounters. And number four, at his return. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we blessed tonight? Yes, we are going to stand up to pray. And just in two minutes, I would like you to cry to the Lord and ask him for an encounter in this season. Listen, when you know that seeing him guarantees transformation, it guarantees a change of level, it guarantees a change of dimension then you'll always long to behold him the psalmist says in psalm 17 verse 15 he says, as for me i will behold in your righteousness i will be satisfied when i awake in your likeness god wants to appear to somebody in this season perhaps you are going through pain perhaps you are going through a lot of things you don't understand all that jesus needs to do is reveal himself to you in the midst of those ugly situations. And that's when everything truly begins to make sense. Stand on your feet as we pray. In one minute, lift your voice and bless the Lord for what you have heard tonight. bless him for the powerful revelation of his word that has come opening your eyes to the truths that you are becoming as you behold him regardless of what is happening around you the circumstances around you don't determine who you are in Christ there is a change going on inside of you Paul says that though our outward man perisheth our inward man is renewed bless him for this word who reigns forever more. I see the Lord I see the Lord exalted high above the worship of the people of the 
yeah, I see the Lord. I see the Lord. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lamb upon the throne, who reigns forever. We are going to sing that song again. I see the Lord. Lift your hands and lift your voice as we declare it. The Lord. Exalted high above the worship of the people of the people of the Lord. I see the Lord. I've seen the king, lamb upon the throne, who reigns forever. We are going to pray the prayer of Moses before we close tonight. I'll give you two minutes to just pray and then we'll wrap up tonight. Sometimes your hunger for God can call him into your space. Sometimes your desire for God can occasion a moment of divine encounter. I don't know where you are right now in life. I'd like you in the next two minutes to cry to your maker and say, Lord, I want to behold you in this season. Reveal yourself afresh to me again. Can you ask him in two minutes? Reveal yourself afresh. Show me a dimension of you I've never seen. Show me a side of you that I'm yet to behold. Those of you outside, make sure you are praying. Oh, that you will open my eyes afresh to behold you like Isaiah did. To see your face again. Give me an encounter with you. A fresh encounter with you. Cry to him. Lord, you Shopping, the 
truth. You're my treasure. You're my treasure. You're my priority. Who can compare with you? Great is your treasure. God that I see moving all across this place. There are people that tonight is the night where a door has been opened for you into the encounters of the Spirit. Please lift your hands. There are about seven people that I see the fire of God. I see a distribution of fire. I see a distribution of fire. That's what I'm seeing. At least seven of them. I see a distribution of fire. That's what I see. I see fire being distributed. And God is saying, come up here. That's the energy for this new dimension. Come up here, says the Spirit of the Lord. Come up here. Come up here to higher encounters. Higher dimensions of grace. He's calling you higher. He's calling you deeper. Oh, morning star, you truly are everything. I don't know why God is asking me to pray this prayer, but I'm praying it, stretching my hands in the name of Jesus. Just the strings. Anyone here that had, you had a prophetic gift by which you could see, you could hear into the realm of the spirit. But now it looks like they are not functioning. I declare that the Lord is anointing your vessel again. And I activate the opening of your senses again. Please help them. I see some people coming under the power of God. I activate, help that lady there. I activate the opening, the reopening of your spiritual senses. And I say to you, see in the name of Jesus. Hear in the name of Jesus. May your heart be open to understand the things of the spirit. May those experiences be imported again into your life. May those experiences come back again into your life. Let this be your season to experience Jesus like John did on the Isle of Patmos. There are many of you tonight, the anointing for prophetic dreams has been released to you beginning from tonight you will go back and begin to see prophetic dreams by the spirit of god god will take you into the future he will show you things about regions about territories about your family about the future he will show you things to come by the spirit take that grace now step into that realm where you begin to experience prophetic dreams prophetic dreams prophetic dreams just the strings 
Lord, we give you praise. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I release you to a season of divine encounters. There are some of you here that the devil has attacked your spiritual life in recent times with laziness, prayerlessness. From today, the power of God comes upon you. Let every prayer altar that is dead come alive again. Come alive again. Come alive again. I open up for you seasons of spiritual encounters. You will see him. You will hear him. You will hear his voice. He will instruct you in the way to go. He will show you things to come. You will be guided by his voice by day and by night. You will walk with precision in keeping to divine instructions. La there are two people in this row here there is a prophetic grace coming on them two people on this row let it be activated from today please help oh my god please help them it's giving just play something soft okay i'm praying for those that are outside May God anoint you with a fresh oil today. Yes, today a fresh oil comes upon you. And God says this oil is for the impossible. By the Spirit of God you will do the impossible. It's coming on your hands. It's coming on your head. It's coming on your feet. Get ready for a season of the supernatural. May the name of God be glorified. Lord, we thank you for tonight. Wave your hands and give him praise. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Before we go, while we are all standing, let me give an opportunity for those who want to say yes to Jesus. You want to give your heart to the Lord. You want to surrender afresh to him. This is your moment. Please all stand in no movement anywhere. This is your moment to return to Jesus. Your transformation begins by the new birth. You must be his first of all. Before you can know him. Or perhaps you want to surrender your life again. You used to be on fire for God but things have gone south. And you want to be restored again. You want him to help you overcome this weakness. Overcome this challenge help you to go strong in him please wherever you are repeat these words after me Lord Jesus I come to you today I repent of my sin I accept you as my Lord and Savior save me help me from today and forever in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah if you pray that prayer, could you lift your right hand? Let me see you. If you pray that prayer with me, please lift your right hand. Inside or outside, I want to pray quickly for you. God bless you. I'm seeing the hand. God bless you. If your hand is lifted, come to the front quickly. If there are those outside, please let them come over to the front. Please clap for them as they are coming. Run to Jesus, the one who saves, the one who delivers. The one who strengthens, the one who lifts. It's all about you. It's all about you. Keep clapping, they are coming. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made. It's all about you. It's all about you. Please stretch your hands towards them and let me pray for them. Father, I pray for these ones in the name of Jesus. If you need to join them, please join them quickly before the prayer is over. If you come when the prayer is over, your salvation is not complete. Lord, I stretch my hands to these ones. I declare by the confession of their mouth and the faith in their heart that they are saved and they have been redeemed. I declare them born again. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
let your spirit live and dwell in them from today reveal to them their callings and their ordinations in you raise them up to become mighty men and women for you and keep them pure all the days of their lives in jesus precious name we pray amen god bless you for this noble decision look at me those of you in front look at me i want you to turn to your left there's a lady standing in front of you walk straight to her and she will direct you to our counselors they will attend to you celebrate god for them as they go i said clap for souls new matter hallelujah amen and amen are we blessed tonight sorry we have overstretched our time but um, just give me a minute if you can be seated for just a brief announcement before we go amen amen i want to acknowledge uh pastor joseph osaya from living faith church god bless you sir please give him a big god bless you god bless you thank you so much sir thank you so much sir for being here he's from the state headquarters of living faith and i'm sure he's also representing pastor samuel the the uh, state uh, pastor please send our love and greetings to him thank you for joining us today amen and every other man or woman of god seated either inside or outside we acknowledge you may god bless you and honor you in jesus name can we celebrate god for those who are outside amen i'm seeing people from here it's not easy to be seated outside you know till it's dark thank you so much may your life never remain the same in jesus name amen. and to those who are following us from different nations and different parts of africa and nigeria may god bless you real good in jesus name uh, please listen to this few announcement uh, like it was announced our messages are now on um, they are now available for iphone users those of you who use iphone you have spotify apple music icloud youtube music um, and several other i think about 25 between 20 to 30 platforms all right on tiktok shaza uh, which other one again boom play and also you can go to any of this platform just type apostle jonathan lagan the message you this is you will see something like this it will pop up literally our messages have been given labels by those companies so go there for those of you who use iphone you know iphone you can't send anything to you just this is a very generous phone amen so you can go there download freely we have messages on almost every dimension of christian living go there and let it bless you use it for your retreat use it for your personal edification and god bless you in jesus name amen and uh, of course also on other platforms you know like youtube telegram facebook and the rest so feel free to go there subscribe and um, download the messages make sure you are subscribed to every of our social media handles so that um, you can get informations about our meetings amen this announcement is to those of us coming from the university there's always a bus available to convey people coming from the university to and fro for every service um, but please be reminded that your assembly time is by 2 p.m 2 p.m departure will be 2 15 all right let's make the departure 2 30 all right aha uh -huh. so assembly time can be from 2 to 2 15 once it's 2 30 the wait is over the bus will leave and if you are not there before 2 30 you may have to come to church on your own of course when you are going back we are going to assist you get on the bus but for not being there on time you will have to come on your own and if you understand how nigeria is now you will ensure that uh, you don't miss the timing please say amen to that so please we crave the indulgence of our student please be time conscious in pneumatic we are time because we start on time all right three is three so when we say 2 p.m. 2.15, please be there at the set time. I've used my veto power to extend it to 2.30. Please don't wait 
to be told. All right? May God help you in Jesus' name. The buses are available for those coming from Bama Road, Fori, Mary, um, and the university. So, for the university students, your assembly uh, point is at the bus park, the Unimate Park. While for Bama Road Junction, Fori, Mary, your assembly point is at Hadiza and Sadiq Filling Station. All right, it's a very popular place. Everybody around that axis will know. And your own assembly time is 2.15 to 2.30. All right? So please get your timings and make sure you are there on time so you can live with the bus. We promise you that buses will be available to convey everybody. If there are people left out, we will send more buses. Amen? And if you want us to send buses to your location, please talk to our PR officers there. Where's the desk? Where's the PR desk? Aha. Uh -huh. It's supposed to be there. So go and meet that person there. And uh, we'll communicate with you to know how many people are coming from your location and to know um, what kind of bus we will send. Clap for Jesus if you are happy. <laughs> Amen. No, it's not easy to send bus this period. Though. So you better, you better thank God for us. We are a very responsible ministry. Amen and amen. Please be on your feet. Are you, are you blessed tonight? I'd like to also inform us that uh, next Sunday begins the seven super Sundays. I thought you would shout better than that. Amen. The theme is the supernatural. It's all about miracles, signs, and wonders. From next Sunday, the 31st of March till the 5th of May. Every of those Sundays will be part of the seven super Sundays. Okay? Less word, more demonstration. Amen. So invite your friends, invite people to come. Anybody willing or looking for the experience of God's power. Anybody trusting God to do something in their life. You now have seven miracle services at once. If God does not do it in this seven, I don't know when next he will do it. Amen. Your story will change in these seven Sundays. In Jesus' name we pray. Reverend Adi, thank you so much for being here. God bless you. We honor you. Amen. Let's share the faith confession before we go. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The students, I believe your boss will be outside. Next Sunday is still in this venue at the same time. God bless you. I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required Oh, you search much deeper Thank you.